Aleluia! Aleluia! Who is glad to be in the church today? Uh, David said, I was glad. I was glad when they said, let us go to the house of the Lord. I believe that the Lord himself is here. If you are sensitive in the spirit, you will know he is here. And he's here for you. He's here for you. And he's going to do you good. In the mighty name of Jesus. If you're watching us online, thank you for joining us. Um, there's no distance with our God. He's going to be there. He's there with you already. And he's going to be meeting your needs today in the mighty name of Jesus. Um, if you're home online and um, it's because of your health, we pray with you that the Lord himself will heal you. But if you're there because of a habit you have just developed, we will beg you to come home. There is nothing like being in the house. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. We are extremely, extremely glad to have you in the church. From this day forward, um, as a program, a family program that, that, you know, that is held here in Mount Zion every third Sunday. Today happens to be the second Sunday. It's because of our great program coming up the ascribe. So come next month on the third of third week, third Sunday in the month of November, we are going to be having another series of from this day forward. God bless you. Um, let me quickly jump into what we have for today. Um, please join, we, join me as you turn to Genesis chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2, verse 22, 24. The book of Genesis is the first book of the Bible. Genesis chapter 2, verse 22 to 24. So the Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep. And while he was sleeping, he took one of the man's ribs and then closed up the place with flesh. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib he had taken out of the man, and he brought her to the man. The man said, this is now bone of my bones and the flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, for she was taken out of man. That is why a man leaves his father and mother and is united to his wife, and they become one flesh. Somebody say in the house, one flesh. One Praise the living God. Today we are going to be looking at Hope for the Family. And Hope for the Family is a two-part series. Uh, to this, today we'll be taking the part one of it. And in November, the month of November, the third Sunday in November, um, we'll be concluding the second part of this very topic, hope for the family. I want you, wherever you are, as you're seated, please kindly stand up on your feet as we honor our God, as we commit today into his hands. We are not here to listen to any man. We want him to speak to us, and we know he is here. I want you to be prepared, even in, in your heart, to receive from him. Please join me as I pray. Father, Heavenly Father, I am extremely, extremely glad that you have chosen me as a vessel to use today. I know you would have chosen another person, but you decided to choose me. Oh, Lord, please don't allow me to fail you. Father, help me, Lord God Almighty, that I'll be able to deliver the word as it should be delivered. Father, cause your children to hear what they must hear. And Lord God Almighty, prepare our hearts, O God, for the revival that is coming in the mighty name of Jesus. We look unto you, O God. Men looked unto you. Women looked unto you. And they were not ashamed. Today, we will not be put to shame in the mighty name of Jesus. Today, Lord God Almighty, you know our needs are many. Father, 
meet our very needs individually attend to us father in each family lord attend to us concerning our marriages every wife father touch the wives for every man, Lord, touch the husbands and make us children that will bring forth praise unto you. Thank you, everlasting Father, because we have prayed in the mighty name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Please have your seat. Have your seat. God bless you. God bless you. Seriously, um, <clears throat> I'll ask you a question. I don't know whether there's anyone here. I did ask in the first service who have ever acted foolishly when they were dating, when they were courting. If you're here and you have ever acted foolishly, let me see you. And if you say you have never acted foolishly, let me see you. Hey, praise the living God. Praise the living God. Sometime last month, the month of September, I took a trip to the United States, um, United Kingdom, Halifax. And it was because we were celebrating our 30th year anniversary. Put your hands for the Lord. Hey, it's not an easy thing, man. 30 years in marriage, it's not easy. It has been the grace of God. Praise the Lord. If you are not yet 30 years, the one who led us, the one who has been helping us, the one who is still with us, the same will do it for you. And if you have gone ahead of us, he will sustain you. Praise the Lord. So while we were there, my eldest brother uh, called and told us, oh, everybody come down, come down. So we came to the uh, sitting room. And so... He told my husband what happened 30 years ago. And he said, it was in my very house. And today, 30 years after, you are in my house. And so the atmosphere changed. Somebody say atmosphere changed. Hey. Hormones were everywhere. My husband pulled out a, a debit card. Brethren, I know this card. It has not been given to me before. <laughs> I know this card, and my husband knows me. I was hesitant. Why should this man be giving me this card today? Something inside of me says, <laughs> if it's a temptation, make sure you... <laughs> Praise the Lord. Ha! Mm. It is well with the righteous. So there you go. So if you have never acted foolishly before, uh, 30 years after, somebody acted foolishly. <laughs> Hallelujah! Praise the Lord. So you will see you know, <laughs> so you will see that, or if you can recall, 30 years ago, or, okay, let me take you, let me forget our own, because, um, uh, 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 uh. I know, I know that's what you want to hear. I know that's what you want to hear. We will say it some other time. So, if you can re remember, or you go back to when you first started, how it was so enjoyable, how, how it was such a, an exciting time. If he says, or if she says, he's coming in the next 30 minutes, how you will dress up, how you will paint up, how you, everything is in order. How you will talk and talk and talk and talk and there is nothing to talk but you are still talking. And if you happen to be on phone, you will talk and talk and talk and talk and someone, one of you will say, okay, hang up. I said, no. you hang up first. And he will say again, hang up. Or if you hang up first, then I will hang up after you. And this keeps happening. Praise the living God. How you, you know, enjoy being in his presence. And you enjoy being in her presence. 
you know, years ago. I can remember in those days how we would talk and talk and talk. And on the other side of the phone, we would say, mm. as like, freeze. Lord, speed up this day. Praise the living God. I don't know whether you can understand what I'm saying. You don't. <laughs> Praise the Lord. The problem is, and the question is, how did we deviate from this? And suddenly, we have forgotten how we started. Suddenly, it is a blame game. Suddenly, it is a war of finding faults. No matter what you do, no matter how you act, how did we get here? You know the tragedy in this? Is the fact that even in the midst of war, we do not know how to respond. We completely are ignorant of the response. I want to be showing us some pictures, a little, maybe a little of the, some animals, and how they respond. And I want to be asking you if this could be a representation of you. How will you best, or how will you be represented, or how are you, or which of this will you best, or will it be, will be a great or a good representation of you? I want to start with the animal, the deer. Do you know that we sometimes act like, act like a deer in front of a light? I don't know if you, if, if you drive, and I'm sure most of us drive, and suddenly the, a deer appears, and the headlight is on. The first thing you will notice is that there's confusion for the deer. It's frightened, it's surprised, and it cannot move. Neither can it think right does not know which way to go. The question the deer must be posing is, what's going on? He's so frozen and his, you know, the eyes are popped. Is someone seeing something? This could be one of us. In our marriages, when the war is on, some of us do act this way. Or probably we'll be acting or act like a bat. <laughs> we act like a bat sometimes. And some of us act like a bat. Bats are blind even though they have eyes. They are blind. You are in the midst of war and you are blind. This is not the right time to be blind. You should ask the Lord to open your eyes to see. How did I get here? It could be the plan of the devil to make you and make you to be blind and not to see that the devil is about to make a shipwreck of your faith. It could also be a plan so that the enemy will put the name of your God to shame. But you are blind. And you think some other people are doing it. Why? I'm not an exception. I can, always, I can also act this way. You could also be like an ostrich. Ostrich. Yes, they bury their head in the sun. Is your head in the sun? Buried? And you will say, I know this is conflict. I'm just going to keep my head in this sand. I'm not bringing it out. I will just ignore him, ignore her. My head is in the sand. 
It could be a tortoise. Maybe you are a representation of a tortoise. You act like a tortoise in your marriage. I'm going to stay in this shell. We drew your hands, we drew your legs, put your head in, talking, move to the next room, and say, I'm going to be here. I don't want anyone to bother me. My life does not depend on him or her. I can do without them. Let me stay in here. Let the world go to hell. How are you responding? Are you responding like any of these animals? Let me ask you a question. Is there any aspect of your life that you can be lazy about and you will see improvements? Is there any aspect of your life that you can be lazy about and you begin to see improvement? You see it improving. Even those of you who went to school, you are lazy, you don't read. And yet you want to make improvements and you want to be promoted to the next class. Even in your physical life. If you don't eat the right food, You are not careful about living an active life. Very soon, the body becomes diseased. Or in your business, if you don't balance the numbers, businessmen in the house, if you don't cast the vision, if you don't have a strategic plan, it could be short-term or long-term strategic plans, Will your business be better? Or will it struggle? The same thing applies to your yard, your garden. If you don't water it, apply fertilizer, prune it, take out the weeds, dress it. Your neighbors will just be whispering, look at their yard, it's overgrown not cared for. For some of us in this house, our marriage <laughs> right now needs fertilizer, needs watering, needs to be attended to. <laughs> I can hear someone say, he doesn't love me anymore. She doesn't love me anymore. I am tired of it. We've been on this for too long. I don't want to die too early and leave my children. I prefer to get a divorce. Are you considering a divorce? So because you ran out of love, you are considering a divorce? Guess what? It's like selling your car because you ran out of gas. Who does that? If your car runs out of gas, <laughs> I think you'll be looking for a gas station where you can refill. You look for a gas station, and there are gas stations everywhere. The gas station is everywhere for you to refill. And here in this house, there is a gas station for you. I know this. I'm sure of this. And I can give it to you as a prescription. Are you running out of gas? Please join me today and open to Genesis chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2, verse 24. And this is what it says. 
That is why a man leaves his father and mother and is united to his wife, and they become one flesh. United, in this case, <laughs> is the word that has to be washed. United is indivisible in this very case. United here is to adhere, is to cling to, is to pursue and pursue hard. There's a difference between just pursuing and pursuing hard. When you pursue hard, you overcome every obstacle. So you can be compared to Mark. The, uh, let me take the, 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 the Bible passage from um, um, the book of Psalms 63. Chapter 63, verse 8. And this says, I cling to you. Your strong right hands holds me securely. You cling, and his hands holds you securely. If peradventure you have not, or you are getting loose because you could not hold, you could not cling properly, his right hand would not let you go. It's a key again that two, two. It's a game that two, two, two with understanding. Cannot default him. If your wife cannot clean properly, let your right hand, the Bible calls it a strong right hand. If your right hand is really strong, as the Bible has said, then you cannot let her go. And so we may have to look in what is your right hand strong enough? Are you clinking properly as you should? Judges chapter 20, verse 20, 47. And they turned and fled towards the wilderness unto the rock of Rimnon. And they gleaned of them in the highways 5,000 men and pursued hard after them unto Gideon. And slew 2,000 men of them. Time will not allow me to make you all explain this very Bible passage. But they knew. The Israelites knew it was war. Your marriage is war. You must fight it. Fight to keep it united. And the Bible records here that the Israelites pursued. And they said they pursued her. They did not just pursue. It was a hard pursuit. In war, you pursue hard. In any race, you are not permitted to look back. Are you looking back? Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10. 38. And it says, Now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. You know, we quote these scriptures to others. Why can't we quote it in our marriage? You can't believe how, how I felt when I was preparing this message. That the Lord himself had to say this. If any man draws back, they just, oh, marriage is a race. It's a work of faith. And the Bible says, if any man draws back, his life, the Lord himself will not have any pleasure in him. 
that should frighten you and I. In the book of um, Genesis chapter 29, it's a very interesting story. A story that you know very well. It's a story of Rachel, Leah, and Jacob. Jacob, Rachel, and Leah. I read. Genesis 29, 16 to 20, and it says, Now Laban had two daughters. The name of the older was Leah, and the name of the younger was Rachel. Leah had weak eyes, but Rachel had a lovely figure and was beautiful. The Bible is full of humor. It just says it as it should be. <laughs> Jacob was in love with Rachel and said, I will work for you seven years in return for your younger <clears throat> daughter, Rachel. He was talking to Jacob. Laban said, oh, he was talking to Laban. And Laban said, it's better that I give her to you than to some other man. Stay here with me. So Jacob served seven years to get Rachel. But they seemed like only a few days to him because of his love for her. Praise the living God. If you read further, you will know that he did not serve just seven years. He served 14 years. He pursued hard. In every obstacle on his way, he made sure it, he defeated it. How far have you pursued that marriage? How far have you pursued your spouse? Be deliberate in the continued pursuit. Nobody wakes up to say, I will get the divorce after five years of this marriage. Well, I'm going to this marriage, but after five years, it's over. Nobody does that. Or immediately I get into this marriage and I just start phonography. Mm -mm. Nobody says that. Everybody goes into marriage with good intentions. Intention. To raise great children for the Lord. To build a family that will be pleasing to him. Everyone goes in and is hopeful that tomorrow will be all right. But what then happens with all this hope, with our intention, and suddenly... We find out that they, are you hearing me? Oh, yeah. So we all go into it with good intentions. Today, from this day forward, and I will beg of you, I will beg that you close the gap between intention and the actions that you take. Because we have intentions and we do not have take any action to make, you know, to, to sustain our intentions. Praise the Lord. Somebody will ask, how will I close up the gap? What is the gap and how can I close it? The gap between the intention you had right from the beginning and the actions that you take. Two, the first thing is when you think Something good about your spouse, say it. Use your mouth. The Lord created this mouth for a reason. You can speak life into your marriage. If you think something good, say it. I saw those legs. Those legs are just like when we newly got married. Uh -huh. I appreciate the exercises you're taking. You're suddenly losing weight. I love that. By the way, suddenly my husband started taking me to the gym. I'm losing weight. Hello. He 
give life to your thoughts. You can give life to your thoughts. In, in Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21, the Bible says the tongue can bring either death or life. And the Bible went on to say this. Those who love to talk will reap the consequences. <laughs> talk about it. The consequence is that you'll be more united. That's the consequence. Praise the living God. Hebrews chapter 3 verse 13 says, But encourage one another daily, as long as it is called today, so that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. Encourage one another daily. Daily. How many of us have encouraged their husbands and their wives this morning? I don't want anyone to raise their hands. When you woke up, you should have been able, or from today, this day forward, as you wake up, encourage him. Encourage her. Say all the good things that you have in your heart. We are not spirit. Yes, we are spirit being, but we are not spirit, only spirit. To be able to see your heart. You have good intention, but you have to alter it. We want to hear it. The second aspect for a woman is for you to pursue, uh, for, for the guys, please pursue them with, with, you know, words of affection. You're so beautiful. I love you so much. You have been a great mother to my children. You have been so understanding. Despite all that we are going through, you've been going through it with me. I'm so happy. I'm so grateful that I have you as a wife. Pursue her with affection. And for the ladies, pursue or ladies, pursue him with words of affirmation. It's very simple for the men. I had said something earlier and I said men are very insecure. Don't tell him how negative, how you know, <laughs> the bad things and the observations you make. You know, just, just tell him something good because whatever you say will come to pass in his life. And I said something, if, you're, if you say your husband is not a spiritual leader, it's, it, I think it, it, it's, it's how you understand it. If he, ever, if he ever says, let's go to church, that is spiritual leading. If you ever prayed for you in the house or the children, that is already a spirit. Even if it is a very simple prayer, that is a spiritual leading. Appreciate him. And the next time he's going to pray, he will pray like a pastor or like a prophet because you have encouraged him. The second thing is that when you think something special, do it. You think like buying him a new ring or a new ring, buy it. You think like kissing her, kiss her, let her know. You just feel like hugging her. Why do you have to, what, what, why? You feel like holding hands. And you say, what will people say? Who cares what they say? Who cares? When you want him to be different, be different yourself. Do it. Begin to change. Begin to conform. Begin to make changes in your life. That will keep for the unity of your union. Praise the living God. <laughs> and please remember this. To get what you once had, you must do what you once did. To get what you once had, that love, that affection, 
that intimacy, you must do what you once did. It's a time to go back to where we all started. Revelation chapter 2, verse 5b says this. Consider how far you have fallen. Repent and do the things you did at first. Consider it. Like, I will beg you. I appeal to you. Just, just in one minute, think about it. Before I came up, before, you know, when I was preparing for this message, I was thinking about how we, it all started while I was in the college and then how we came back home, you know, to Lagos in Nigeria, Africa. I took my mind back there and I was thinking about it. Those things you were doing, those preparations, those kind words, text messages, letters. I can remember a poem my husband wrote <laughs> to me when I was cutting. So some days ago, and I asked him, write me another poem, I need it. I need those poems. And please never forget that the two shall become one flesh. And what God has put together, what God, say God, God. what God, what God, not man, God has put together. Let no man, born of a woman, let no man, living or dead hold asunder shall we be on our feet all eyes closed are you there you and you're struggling in your marriage there is an invisible eye that is looking at you, that knows you, the all-knowing God. Are you there and you are going through pains? And you are struggling? Are you there and you are acting like an ostrich with your head buried in the sand? Are you there? Like a bat. With seeing eyes, but yet blind. Are you there? Like a tortoise, and you have withdrawn into your shell. Our all knowing God, the help of the helpless, is in the house. He's in the house. He's in the house. He's in the house. He's here to help you. He's here to help me. Call upon him. Call upon him. Call on him. Call on him. His ears are not hard of hearing. Call on him. Call on him. He is in the room. He is in the room. He is in the room. Call on him. Call on him today. Father, we thank you. Spirit of the living God. We thank you. Thank you, everlasting Father. Thank you, Lord.